Your Majesties, Reverend Bishops, Lords, by order of His Christian Majesty King James, we begin today a disputation between Christianity and Judaism. His Majesty's object in holding this disputation is to bring his Jewish subjects to Christ by reason and persuasion. Speaking for Christianity is Brother Pablo Cristiani, and for Judaism, Rabbi Moses Ben Nachman. Your Majesties, may I present Rabbi Moses of Girona. You are most welcome, Rabbi Moses. I have heard that you are a person well worthy of the honor of representing the Jewish community in our disputation. With respect, Your Majesty, it is an honor I would much prefer to decline. Decline? We are disappointed in you, Rabbi. Does the opposition frighten you? Not at all, Your Majesty. I'm not afraid of opposition. Nor am I averse to disputations. I've been engaged in disputations all my life. What is your objection, then? When the lion invites the mouse to a disputation, Your Majesty, the mouse, however fond he may be of arguing, would do well to avoid the disputation if he can, for the poor mouse does not know which to fear most, losing the argument or winning it. What are you afraid of, Rabbi? There have been other disputations, Your Majesty, and they have always ended in suffering for the Jewish people. In Paris recently... We are not barbarous French. We know the rules of fair play. I guarantee your safety and that of your fellow Jews during and after the disputation. I thank your majesty and accept your assurance. I wish now to raise another point. In the other disputations, many rules were laid down about what the Jewish disputants were allowed to say. I don't understand. It was necessary, of course, to lay down some rules. Otherwise, the Jewish disputants might have uttered some shocking blasphemies. May I ask the learned brother Raymond, Your Majesty, whether he intends to lay down such rules for the present disputation? Only a few, Your Majesty. It is necessary to ensure that no blasphemies be uttered against the person of our blessed Lord and Saviour, nor against his blessed mother, the Virgin Mary. I'm afraid if I'm to represent the case for Judaism adequately, I cannot undertake to avoid remarks which to the Christian might appear blasphemous. Raymond, the rabbi is right. You may use whichever arguments you choose. You have complete liberty of speech. I thank your majesty. I hope you will not use this liberty to revile and blaspheme Christianity. I am aware of the rules of common courtesy. I hope you will enter the disputation, Rabbi Moses, with a mind open to the truth. I enter the contest with a mind as open as your own, Brother Raymond. By which he means, Raymond, that you and Brother Pablo must entertain the possibility of being converted to Judaism. By the way, Rabbi, may I introduce you to your antagonist, Brother Pablo Cristiani, who was once of your faith. I am honored to have such an antagonist as you, Rabbi Moses. I look forward with interest to your arguments. May God bless our disputation and bring it to a good conclusion. Amen. Your Majesties, Reverend Bishops, Lords, by order of His Christian Majesty King James, we begin today a disputation between Christianity and Judaism. His Majesty's object in holding this disputation is to draw his Jewish subjects to Christ by reason and persuasion. Speaking for Christianity is Brother Pablo Cristiani, and for Judaism, Rabbi Moses Ben Nachman. Rabbi Moses. Your Majesties, I too believe that reason is alone sufficient to settle these matters. As my first contribution, I should like to suggest certain lines on which the discussion should proceed. I suggest we should devote ourselves to two questions, which in my view are the most vital. What are they, Rabbi Moses? The first question is, is the Messiah come, or is he yet to come? 
The second question, is the Messiah prophesied in scriptures a man or a divine being? Do you agree with this proposal, Brother Pablo? I do, Your Majesty. I'm astonished that we have reached agreement on procedure so rapidly. There is one point I wish to raise, Your Majesty. Yes. Rabbi Moses has referred to prophecy in scripture, but not to the Talmud. If I may explain, the Talmud is the book of Jewish traditions which date to a time long before the birth of Christ. It explains the laws and stories and prophecies of the Old Testament in such a thoroughgoing way that the Jewish faith without it would be shorn of a great deal of its content. It is my contention that the Talmud also proves that the divine Messiah has come. Rabbi Moses, do you agree that the Talmud should be brought into this discussion? I have no objection, Your Majesty. However, I should like to give Brother Pablo a friendly warning, which may save him a great deal of time and trouble. It is simply that we Jews do not always agree with everything we find in the Talmud. But do you not accept that the Talmud is a holy book to the Jews? I do, but the Talmud is a record of discussions. These discussions took place between rabbis over the course of about 500 years on every aspect of Jewish religion. Obviously, when two rabbis disagree, which happens on every page of the Talmud, both cannot be accepted as right. Consequently, many sayings in the Talmud are not accepted by the Jews. I see. Moreover, Your Majesty, there is another point to be considered. Yes. It is only the legal parts of the Talmud, the halakha, that Jews consider binding. The non-legal parts, the Haggadah, being poetical and open to various interpretations, are not considered binding. The subject of the Messiah belongs to the poetical part of the Talmud. This is a very strange holy book. The Talmud is a holy book, but not what Christians mean by a holy book. But what about the Bible? Do you not accept that the Bible is a holy book? More so, even, than the Talmud? Yes, but then... We are seldom sure what the Bible means. That is what the discussions in the Talmud are all about. It seems that you are going to be rather difficult to pin down in this discussion, Rabbi. Brother Pablo, can you elicit from the Rabbi a clearer statement? I shall do my best, Your Majesty. Now, Rabbi Moses, I think you have been exaggerating the flexibility of the Jewish religious attitude a little. I was a Jew myself for many years, and your description of Judaism doesn't quite tally with my recollection of it. Perhaps you have forgotten something since you became a Christian. I don't think so. Or perhaps there were certain things about Judaism that you never understood. Tell me, is there such a thing as heresy in Jewish religion? Yes, there is. And what is a heretic in Jewish law? A Jew who denies an essential principle of the Jewish faith. And what are the essential principles of the Jewish faith? That is a matter of dispute. Surely there are some articles of the faith beyond dispute. There are some, yes. The unity of God is one, the revelation on Mount Sinai another, but we have no agreed and definitive set of theological doctrines as you Christians have, for which you are prepared to burn people as heretics. Is it not true, Rabbi Moses, that you Jews give great respect to the recorded sayings of the rabbis, even though they may not necessarily be fully authoritative? That is so. If you found that many sayings of the rabbis point to the conclusion that the Messiah has already come and that he is divine, would this fact impress you? It certainly would. I propose to prove that many sayings in the Talmud show unmistakably both that the Messiah has already come and that his nature is divine. If you can prove that, you will have struck a great blow for your side of this disputation. The question is, has the Messiah come? Father Pablo. Your Majesties. Let me begin by citing a passage not from the Old Testament, but from the Talmud. The Talmud says, at the time when the temple was destroyed, the Messiah was born. What an extraordinary statement. The temple was destroyed about 1,200 years ago, round about the time of the beginning of Christianity. 
Now let me put the question directly to Rabbi Moses. Why are the Jews waiting for the Messiah when their own Talmud tells them that he came 1,200 years ago? What do you have to say to this, Rabbi Moses? Your Majesty, with respect to Brother Pablo, the Talmud does not say that the Messiah came at the time of the destruction of the Temple. It only says he was born then. But isn't that much the same thing? No, Your Majesty. When Moses came to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, it was 80 years after he was born. That is hardly a task for a newborn babe. Similarly, the date of the Messiah's birth is by no means the same as the date of his coming. And when will be his coming? When he leads the Jews back to the Holy Land. That hasn't happened yet, so he hasn't yet come. Do you mean to tell us that the Messiah was born 1,200 years ago and that he still hasn't come? Yes. He must be getting pretty long in the tooth then, 1,200 years old. Adam lived almost as long as that, and Elijah, who never died, has lived very much longer and will return together with the Messiah. Where has the Messiah been all this time? The Talmud says in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Do you really believe that? Many more incredible things than that are believed in the name of religion, Your Majesty. I personally do not believe that the Messiah was born at the time of the destruction of the Temple. I think he has not yet been born. But the Talmud says quite distinctly that he was born then. It is poetry, a parable. You Christians know what parables are. It's a way of saying that hope is born in the very depths of despair. It should not be taken literally. Are you saying that the Talmud is telling lies? A parable is not a lie. But Rabbi Moses, you are shifting your ground. Not at all. If you want to take literally that the Messiah was born, then I have given you my answer. I personally do not take it literally. That's clear enough, surely? <laughs> <laughs>